One of the significant drawbacks when using Excel in certain situations is that files can become too big and hard to work with. Here are a few reasons why this could happen to you, as well as remedies for such situations. A key assumption we must make is that the issues we'll discuss in this lesson are not due to a slow PC, because that is a completely different problem. Okay, very well. Reason number one. The data you are working with is too big. Let's say that if your data source is above 100,000 rows and contains many columns, you can potentially have a situation in which Excel would take a significant amount of time to calculate and process the functions you've created in the spreadsheet. All of this depends on what type of operations have been used in the file. In particular, Excel has a hard time when it needs to process complicated nested functions, like the ones you see here. In such a scenario, one quick fix would be to carry out some of the operations with pivot tables, which are much lighter computation-wise. This is one fix. Another is to think of a way to carry out the same operation, but in a lighter way. For example, VLOOKUP is much lighter than INDEX and MATCH. Although INDEX and MATCH is superior in most cases, if we want to improve efficiency, VLOOKUP would be preferable. A third suggestion is to be careful with IF ERROR and IS ERROR functions that are added in front of your main function in a given cell. See? Yes, this can be very convenient, but it also makes files quite large. So, whenever working with large data, this is certainly one potential source of efficiency. So that's the first, and by far the most common reason for problems with Excel file size. Here's another one. It could happen, although rarely, that your file size increases after importing external sheets copying external formatting, or carrying out another operation that has to do with the outside world. If this happens, please try the following. Locate the last cell in your sheet containing any content, okay? Then you should select the row directly beneath that cell. Hold Shift and press the down arrow to select all rows within the file that are under the last cell with content. Then go ahead and delete these rows with Control and Minus. They should be empty anyway. Sometimes, I'm not really sure why, but we can have information that is stored here, although not visible, and this makes file sizes larger. To be sure that the issue has been taken care of, please do the same operation with empty columns to the right, too. Another reason why your file could be too big is that some images have been added, and they are quite large. In such situations, you can either compress the images and add them back to the file, or simply remove the images, if they are not necessary. Okay, we're doing great. One thing I have noticed is that many users are reluctant to tidy up their files and let go of unused sheets, calculations, or charts. In the process of building a model, frequently we have sheets that are kept as old. Please consider transferring these to a separate workbook, just in case. If you have issues with file size, that's probably one of the first things to consider doing. Okay, also, Here's a neat trick that can be applied to save some space. It is a bit dangerous, so please make sure that you save a new version of your file. Once you have done that, you can simply save the Excel file as an Excel 97 to 2003 workbook. Close the file, then reopen it. Check if everything that you need is still there. And after you have done that, Save the file back as an Excel workbook. This should be quite helpful and reduce file size. A word of caution, though. 
If you notice that some errors have appeared, or that there is any other issue with the file saved as an Excel 97 to 2003 workbook, then please go back to its old version and skip this technique. I have suffered significantly from large Excel files in the past, and therefore want to help you avoid this pain. This is why I've searched my memory very carefully in an effort to provide the most useful tips I have for you. Pivot tables are efficient, but can consume a lot of space too, especially if you create multiple pivot tables. Each of them stores a cached copy of the data set you're using as a source. So, if you plan on creating multiple pivot tables that feed from the same source data, don't create them separately. Instead, copy these pivot tables, and then simply adjust the fields of the copied pivot table. In this way, sourced data will be cached only once. Very well. I hope that this lesson was useful and that you wouldn't have to spend ages in front of the PC staring at Excel's calculating sign.